All right, good morning, God bless everybody. It is 7.25, the 20th June. Time's going by. God bless you guys in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. I hope everybody out there is um, staying steadfast, staying focused on our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't be uh, overwhelmed with anything that you might see. Uh, happening. Just be unmovable, steadfast in Christ, knowing that the Lord is bringing all this down. This is all spiritual, what you see in you guys. Flesh has got nothing to do but be destroyed at this point. Okay, You didn't have your eyes open to have a spirit of fear, but a spirit of uh, hope and faith and belief in God the Father and in Jesus Christ. A couple of things I'm going to read this morning, you guys. Remember, um, all this is coming down. Whatever you see happening, it's all spiritual, and God brings it down the way he wants to and the way you're going to see it. You know, like if everybody's ways were pleasing to him, you would be seeing peace, joy, love, and stuff, and uh, they're not living that way. That people were kept wanting the ways of the world, what it is. All right, let us go to uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 8. Chapter 3, verse 8. Verse 8. Yeah, doubtless, I count all things but loss to the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and I do count them but dung, that I may win Christ, and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through faith of Christ. The righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, being made comfortable unto his death. You guys, to have a mind like this, you have to be born again. You can't be um, of this world and uh, have a mind like that. You, your mind has to be. Spiritually, because to be carnally minded is death. That's in scripture. That's not me saying it. That's in scripture. These things were not being thought of properly like they should have been. And had we been living this way, it would have been more peaceful and love and joy and all those things. You would have seen. Uh, it would have been so pleasant, you know, to, to even to be here. You know, we wouldn't have the evil that we have today. Um, last night, some of the dreams that I had, you know, it's like, there's a lot going on spiritually, you guys. And uh, in these dreams, uh, I've seen where uh, everything was dark. And then the streets, looking down the streets, I could see where some of the buildings had black plastic taped off in front of it. I was thinking to myself, why would you, um, these, these buildings are condemned and they're, they're not being used anymore. Why would you put black plastic on the front windows in a condemned building as if trying to hide something like they didn't want to be seen on the inside? And uh, so I went around the back of the building and like I said, you guys, this is spiritual. There's more going on than everybody knows. And uh, the Lord's getting ready to take his, get all his. And uh, this is what I see in here. And I didn't, I didn't like what I was seeing. But anyhow, there was a van in the back of this building. When I went in the back, there was a van in there. And I took in, uh, it had like hit it behind some boards. And I went up there and I seen somebody back there. I said, what are you doing back here? And it was like I was with somebody there that was there too. And like in, we were there to investigate. And uh, 
And this guy wasn't saying nothing. I'm going, and I noticed, I said, where is your plate? I don't even see a plate on the back of your car. And uh, I was just noticing a lot of hidden things. And uh, even where he was at. And then when he opened up the back door, I noticed that it was real messy in there. Like tons of trash and stuff in the back of the van. And then uh, he handed us something and it was a card. It was a black card, like a, like a black ace of clubs or something like that. And, uh, and I handed it to that other guy and I said, you know, this, I don't like this. And then uh, I ended up going inside a store or something like that. And I had something and I told him, I said, where is your trash? And he goes, like he didn't have one or didn't know what to do with anything. And, uh, and then uh, this other guy was standing in front of the, or sitting in front of the door like he was blocking it. I told him, I said, you need to move. And he got up and moved, but he was grumbling about it. And I opened the door and I went back out there and I went to that van. Now the van was cleaned out. It was all clean. And uh, there was a guy standing there like in a trance, sitting there on the floor like in a trance. And that whole van was cleaned out. And then this other guy that was like guarding the door in the van. Um, this is what's strange, you guys. And then all of a sudden I started singing. And the song, I can't remember what it was, but it sounded really, really nice. Then the guy that was standing at that door, man, he crawled in the back and he fell asleep. And uh, like I said, the whole van was cleaned out and uh, wasn't there. But then I started seeing like a younger girl. And I felt like this girl was killed in that van. And after we did what we did there, she was released from it, you know, let go. And then there was a silver platter that was put behind her where she had a better picture of her. She was like released from where she was. She was captive in this van trying to come down the building. And this van, it, you know, some of their, uh, Things they were saying, like they were a ministry, like they were uh, a facade, like they were playing to be a ministry of God, and they weren't, you know. A lot of wickedness, you know. But, uh, that's what I was seeing in the like the streets, and I could see some windows having black plastic where you can't see through it at all, taped up in condemned buildings. And then I knew something was wrong, you know. And here today in this life, you guys, a lot of people, there's things like that going on, but they just go over everybody's head. They don't consider what might be going on in a place like this. Um, why would you cover windows in a condemned building? Any, all right. Let's go to chapter 4, Philippians still, uh, verse 13. 4, 13. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Notwithstanding, you have done well. You have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonia, ye sent once and again unto my necessity, not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. Okay, guys, listen. Stay always uh, joy in the Lord, man. No matter what you see happening right now, okay? It's not going to be a pretty sight seeing what we're seeing. But just remember um, who you are in Christ and why these things are happening. Okay, things are happening because they prefer, they love this world.
world, the present world we live in, is evil. There's nothing good about it. It's evil. For this. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things that are pure, whatsoever things that are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. So, you know, when you're having whatever's coming up, you have thoughts popping up, you don't like them to come out, think on things that are pleasant. In heaven, in God, in Christ, immediately start thinking on these. This is where the enemies trying to come against us. And the God of peace will be with you. Okay. As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him. Remember you guys, we were uh, predestined. We had our eyes open for this time. Okay. Otherwise, you'd be a reprobate. You wouldn't see what was going on. That's why yesterday when I said read that and it said, ask yourself to see if you be of the reprobate. You know? You're not. You know, otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Okay. And it goes on, it warns you, it says, Beware lest any man spoil you through uh, philosophy, vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. See, I've had a lot of that happen, people speaking about worldly things, not after Christ. Guys, this is over here, man. We should have always, we should have been teaching our children this. When we were young, when they were young, you know, this is how we should have been bringing them up and raise them up according to the world. That's how it is. There's no doubt about it. All you got to do is look. We were all, um, we were all indoctrinated. That's why the Bible it tells you raise a child up when he's young. When he's older, he won't stray away. The reason why it says that, and that's to let you see and know where we're at right now and why. You know, had we read this 20, 30, 100 years ago, we, it, this would have been telling you what it's telling us today. Because I'm telling you, even 100 years ago, 200 years ago, they weren't living this way. Evil was always present and it was always growing because the light wasn't being wasn't being taught like it should have been. You know, look at way back in the 1800s, 1700s, schools. Schools, yeah, they might have taught a little bit more in here. But I guarantee you they were teaching more of the world. All right, let's go to uh, 2 Timothy. Chapter 4. Five through ten. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. I am now ready to be offered. The time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Hence there, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. The Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, not to me only, but unto all them, 
also that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, for Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus to Telemeth. Only Luke is with me. Take Mark and bring him with thee, for he is profitable to me for the ministry. Did you notice here in verse 10, it said, uh, how somebody forsakes him? Why? Having loved this present world. That's why. Having loved this present world, he fell away. That was back then, you know. <clears throat> All right, go to uh, First Peter chapter four. Eleven through nineteen. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth. God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened to you. But rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with it. Seeding joy. Now, you guys, I had a dream of that where I seen when he's coming, and as we're trans, trans, current changed, we're heading towards him. The smiles on our faces, you would have to be spirit in order to smile as big as I see. You know, and it's because we're dying to this world and the things that are in it and it's in the affliction. They, you know, they do increase. We're, you know, there's no joy in this place because we know what it is. We know, you know, evil has got a grip on everything in the whole world. Actually, they're they're controlling their world leaders. You know, Christ was offered all the kingdoms. Well, people don't consider who took those kingdoms and placed them. You know, but we know Scripture says they're still in God's hands gonna let them do what they do why because people gotta get sick of it people have to hate it those that love this life are gonna lose it those that hate this life are gonna save it scripture is clear about this there ain't nothing about this that you should be loving nothing okay all right let's go to second peter chapter three one through eight 11 through 18. And this is good. I'm going to close off with this, okay? Second Peter chapter 3, 11 through 18. All right. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be? All holy conversation and godliness. In other words, this is all going to be dissolved. When I brought showing you those chemtrails in the sky, now they're all over there, especially in front of the sun. That's where they really spray it heavy over there. And it looks milky white and it starts getting blue. But right in front of the sun, it's heavy. It's seeing then that these things shall be dissolved. Listen to that. I'm going to start off at 10. The day of, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. The elements. What do you think that is? They're spraying in front of the sun. It's going to boom. It's going to pop. And then the elements are going to melt with a fervent heat. Believe it or not, that's aluminum and stuff like that. They grind it into dust. They take the dust and do that. And spray it up there. Why? 
got to be dust so it floats. Then they put other things with it to help it sustain it longer in the air. Seeing that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Guys, even the church, I'm not sharing this. If they don't, if they're not aware of what they're spraying in the sky in front of the sun and everything, if they're not aware of this, there's nothing you can, you can point it out. I pointed it to them, and they looked right at it. Wow, you could see four or five jets constantly at work doing it, doing it in square patterns, checkers. <laughs> and they looked at it, and they couldn't understand it. They looked at it like they were reprobate. You know, I'm talking in the church. All right. See, and then all these things shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting into the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens, being on fire, shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. Guys, this also gives me a time frame. I have an understanding of what I am seeing. Okay, knowing that these things are going to melt with a fervent heat. This is what the scriptures is talking about. Okay, so that tells me how close we are, not to mention everything else we've seen, like Obama Nation, Trump Pence, you know, Biden time. Yeah. We're at the end. The Pope, he came in his own name. He just said, I cover my father's name and me you reject. He goes, but there's one coming in his own name. Him you will receive. And it was at the United Nations when he did that in New York. Yeah, you know, where they got those floodgates. They put him in, in 2017. So those people don't escape, man. Hmm. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, we look for the new heaven and the new earth. Wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that you may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless. Add account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, he has written unto you. Also, see also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things they're hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest, and they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. You know, you see, you hear a lot of these guys, they're reprobate. You know, anybody, that, you know, we know sin is evil. Anybody that's still continuing in this, and then, you know, if they're not born again, yeah, they're going to be continually. Yeah, they ain't going to be able to stop. If you're born again and you die to this world, so you got to be dead and be with Christ. We have to crucify our flesh and be born with Christ right now. Dead to this world. And then we're going to be raised as he was raised. But if you're born again, you're not going to be out there all the time. You're going to be dead to this world. The only way you're going to be sitting in it all the time is if you're in it, part of it. Right? Ye therefore, beloved, seeing you know all these things, before beware lest you also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness, but grow in grace in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Him be glory both now and forever. Amen. This is why, you guys, it says, um, um, this is why, you guys, we got to be steadfast, head to this world. I love this. And, oh, it gave me a couple of little New Testament books. I give out to people when I see them. That's nice. We used to, we used to buy them and stuff like that. 
lately. Haven't done that, but we might get some more. Don't see anybody hardly anymore. I mean, we witness testify with people that we come in conversation with. Uh, it's gonna be a horrible time, man, when these people realize what's coming on them. It's, it's over here, and they don't know it. You know, they don't know it. They're living in the day of evil, but they're loving it. You know, going on like life is still going on. But it's that. All right, you guys. Is every one of you this Sunday morning? <laughs> and remember, you can tell how close we are, according to what's in the scripture and what the Lord has revealed unto it. We're seeing what the reprobate can't see. Those that are of the world, they're blind to what we see. That's why I say you got to be dead to the world, born again in the Spirit of God be born again in order to see these things and have any kind of understanding. Otherwise, they're not going to know anything. Even trying to tell them they can't receive it, pointing it out, showing it to them. You know, and so this is one thing. They would open their hearts, they would Christ in, heal them. That's what it is. They got to be healed. This world, the seared conscience, man. Scripture talks about that, having a seared conscience. In other words, they can't see for it with a hot iron. Seared. By the grace of God, man, I had my eyes open. I always had a love for the Lord. But thank God, I had my eyes open really big. I was seeing things throughout the years. But I was always not trying to, you know, because it was... Art, nobody would believe it for the things that I was seeing. And then the Lord just really poured it on to me. There's no denying it, and I don't care if they don't believe it. It's on them. God bless you guys. I love each and every one of you. In the name of our Lord and our Savior, Christ. All things in Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, I believe that he died and raised. On the third day, will be saved. You want to read your scriptures, you got to understand and keep the commandments of God and the testimonies of Jesus Christ. You have to do these things. There's a lot of people that are telling people nonsense. And if you don't read those scriptures to yourself, you're going to believe and fall away to the lies. God bless you in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And why would the devil do that? Deceptive with lies. Work through people, this carnal flesh. God bless you, Jesus Christ, our Lord.